la revista guardada, par 2. First of all, Pap, uh, I would like to know what relationship did you find between Beirut and Barcelona? Oh, uh, I went there the first time in 1987. And that was to select some works from uh, uh, 87 or 88, 88. To select some works from a Barcelona artist that I had seen at the FIAC and it was very interesting. I was planning an exhibition in my gallery where I, to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the gallery, forthcoming anniversary, and it was uh, 10 abstract artists from different cultures, Japan, Iraq, Lebanon, France, Spain, Italy, I forget now, and it was called Reflex, Reflexion Abstract, Abstract Reflections, but uh, with an X, Reflections. And uh, Barcelona was the first time I go to it, and it was uh, that, uh, something struck of a similarity between these two uh, cities opposite the, each other on the Mediterranean, uh, Barcelona and Beirut. And then when I started getting more in, in going more in Barcelona for personal reasons, uh, it developed much more until that one day we, uh, I uh, got the courage to ask this uh, Catalan artist if uh, uh, she would be my uh, partner. And uh, then a discussion started about where we will live. Evidently, she likes Paris because Paris is the place for all artists. But I love, fell in love with Barcelona, the city. And I didn't want Paris. I was fed up of Paris. So finally, we agreed to... Barcelona, and since then I saw more similarities, which is the Catalan vis-à-vis -vis the interior, like Lebanon, its uh, particularity vis-à-vis -vis the interior. Other similarity was the, the this mixture between in the population between uh, business and uh, uh, education and what have you, and cultural life. And that also brought sim similarities for me that grew with time. And with time also I <laughs> started saying how stupid were we in the East to not to, uh, you know, to have wasted 25 years in infighting and not growing properly into a nice civil city that can become maybe sometime in the future like that. 
So this is Barcelona for you. It's. Uh, I even tried to start a gallery. I had a design office there, but I even tried to start a gallery in uh, in a new de development area, which was nice. But and thought of bringing in artists from uh, Lebanon, including one which in your documentary we are unable to, to, that was for the inauguration, the idea, a very, very brilliant uh, designer who did costumes, modern, very modern costumes, inspired by traditional crafts in the East. She was the wife of an architect that has passed away now. And I knew her work over, you know, in the most difficult times. And uh, uh, she was, uh, she started as a painter, and she claims that some time ago in the 60s, in one of the big inaugurations in the Orient newspapers uh, hall, I was, uh, you know, looking at the thing, and there comes a petite lady, very pretty, very... Uh, and she says, what do you think of this work? It was a very advanced work, by the way. But then, with the youth attitude and a bit surprised by this, uh, I didn't know who the author was. I said, it's, it's quite interesting, it's very good, I like it, but uh, I have to really take my time to give you an answer like that. He said, you know who did that? I said, no, I don't. Me. I should really know how to, who to ask next time. And she turned and went away. <laughs> okay. I saw her maybe 30 years after she had started her business of design. And I was traveling to Beirut uh, with uh, Ton, with Asuncion. And she was in the plane with her husband, the architect friend of mine, so we exchanged seats. I sat with him and she sat with her, they talked. And uh, then we were all talking together and she said, you made me stop painting. I said, me? <laughs> Maybe I did you well because you're a brilliant designer now and a very brilliant designer. It's a pity we were unable to photograph her work. She's a bit uh, withdrawn from this uh, world now. But that's Beirut for you. And what brought you back to Beirut? What brought me back is a family thing I have. Uh, uh, my mother lived here and my brother lived here. She was advanced in age and a bit ill. And my brother has taken care of, was taking care of her here. But he made a break to go to London for his medical checkups or whatever. And I came to keep her a bit of company. In the meantime, uh, my brother passed away in London. And that was shocking for all of us, but for her particularly, and we didn't want to tell her. But strange mothers, very strange. She had a feeling, although she didn't know, we did all the, uh, you know, the related ceremonies at my sister's home. She, 
so that she doesn't know, we didn't get any newspapers, he didn't let her listen to the radio or anything, but she had it, and sorrow makes you pass away as well. She passed away in the meantime. In that time, I passed nearly two months in Beirut, and uh, I, I was getting a bit used, more used to it, and Beirut grabs you. And I had my work in Saudi Arabia, it was easy for me to travel from here there. So it became a life in two cities, which is not bad. But I still like Barcelona and I like the, where we live in the north. Jafra. Hopefully, I'll finish with this work here and be able to sit and write and take walks. This is. Uh, How did you feel if uh, Lebanon had changed from when you had left? It's uh, it's not only Lebanon that changed. We changed as well. Perhaps. You know, you you don't grow over forty years without changing a lot of your priorities, thinking, context of your life. Everything changes. But Lebanon also changed. First, there is the most evident change. This. Destruction. I will. Uh, I hope you would see some photographs of these, because it was a time we didn't recognize the city. It changed to go through it, uh, um, and socially it changed a bit. Uh, particularly my area, which I knew very well, which is Ras Beirut, the which the, the zone where we live from here to university, to the St. George region, up to uh, the Corniche Mazra or whatever. This is what's called Ras Beirut. It was, before the war, multifactional. Everybody lived, you know, you had neighbors, uh, uh, Protestants, uh, uh, Catholics, Greek Orthodox, Muslims, Sunni, Shia, Druze, nobody cared, nobody bothered, nobody, although everybody knew their identities and what have you, but it was an integrated city. And uh, that, during the war, unfortunately changed. It lost a lot of its mixed population. Thank God I mean, there was the university. It kept going, but also the universities fell under the, this social climate change that's happening. And uh, it, be it became what the war wanted it to happen. A city with, uh, with two uh, rhythms. You uh, see here, it's nice, Hamra, etc., but very uh, shabby area now, except for these ugly towers that are cropping every place, uh, all over the place here. But you go, for example, to the other side, had retained all that Beirut had before, which is liveliness, you know, from Maram Khail to the Armenian zone to, the, there is a city in flux, whether while enjoying themselves or while working or while, two different uh, uh, speeds or rhythms. It's changed in this respect. We're hoping sometime in the future, maybe, but 
Unfortunately, the country is in a zone where it's made for conflicts, for perpetual conflicts. You could even think of, uh, of it as a cycle. Every 20 years, there must be maximum. There must be an overhaul in any one of the places, and it affects the whole region, like now. Well, this thing in Syria, uh, it affects Iraq, it affects Syria, it affects Lebanon, it affects uh, the whole region. And culturally, you, before the war, when you were living here, you used to know the artists of that period? Yes, yeah, so all. It was a very beautiful community. How uh, do you see them also now? There is a difference. Uh, there is a big difference. Uh, generally, generally, I'm talking about painting and sculpture now. Then we look at other things. In these areas, there used to be the, uh, and a good academy and school of fine arts. But it was under the cultural influence of Europe because here we didn't have a, a structured uh, heritage in, in, in painting nor in sculpture. It came progressively and in parallel with what was happening in Europe. In a, in a very, some artists were exceptional by getting out of the, uh, like Arif Reyes, for example, spectacular, fantastic personality, which is unfortunate you were unable to, to meet him, but you must have seen a lot of his work. He was, uh, uh, an artist that didn't conform at all, and he was ready to risk all his well-earned reputation in work and market in the niche in the art market because he has an idea and he wants to try it, irrespective of brilliant artist and politically he was always situated someplace that is the least uh, uh, popular amongst uh, uh, sedate calm uh, patrons like that he was uh, he was a great man that is one unique thing but the majority they were good abstract painters, there were some good, uh, but it is what was generally happening in Europe with a flavor for each one of them, but uh, nothing. Now, it's different. Now, a, most of the artists that are of any value really Academy was for them a passage of, uh, you know, like going through secondary school or whatever to, uh, to learn, uh, to fit into a, 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 a professional line. But once they took their own, uh, their own uh, decisions in hand, some of them are very original, very, very original. <clears throat> and, and common between all, most of them is that uh, is a rebellious attitude against conformism with 
accepted traditions of art. Some of them go too far, maybe in my opinion, maybe I'm mistaken, in, in, uh, uh, in operating in zones that I am till now unable to understand. But some are, uh, are becoming, uh, uh, possibly some of them, leaders in movements, whatever they are happening. I know what's happening in Europe, I know what's happening in, in, uh, in the both Americas. Uh, I see a, a, a move of a young generation which is under 40 that are captivating our imagination, captivating the whole scene, because there is nothing really at all. If you take politics, economy, I don't know what, infrastructure, it's all down in, in the whole area, not particularly Beirut. Art and artists in Lebanon, artists now in its broadest sense, uh, theater, music, uh, these uh, painters, sculptors, they're doing some really new revelations and I like that, it's very refreshing. What do you think about artists like Ayman, Osama, Anashar, the ones we've been meeting this, these past days? Look, all of them, uh, uh, there is different scales of success but I really don't care what success uh, means because success is a two-sided element. Uh, Ayman is probably, Ayman is the most successful. Nabil Nahas is successful but he's of another generation. He started in the 70s, you know, but Ayman was born in the after the 70s, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they, this is, there is a generation I've got. The younger ones are uh, quite successful artists, irrespective of deteriorating economy and so on. Ayman Balbaki is quoted as by international standards now of his work. The others as well, uh, this young sculptor, fantastic, Anashar. At first, coming from Barcelona, hearing the name Anashar, Basbus, this uh, uh, Rashana Anashar thing, uh, uh, until I saw the work the first time, it's a revelation. Then I started seeing them more than seeing, you know, he worked on his father's uh, heritage as well, although they are totally different in, 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 uh, but uh, the man did a spectacular job of conservation of his father's heritage, who was a prime sculptor in Lebanon. And his work is, you've seen it. Many of these, the, the, the younger uh, uh, Osama, uh, Balbaki, Osama, there are designers, there are other post, you know, the furniture designers. You haven't seen everything. There is a lot happening and it's all original, no, uh, uh, no uh, coerced influences, no copycatting, no. Uh, you find it in every society even here, but uh, this generation, this I call the hopeful generation, are uh, awesome. Why do you call them the hopeful, uh, the hopeful generation? I, I think I coined it just now <laughs> because you, you really have to, 
if you love a place, you hope that it will be eventually populated by uh, creative, decent, interacting people with sense of the responsibility around for they know about their city, they enjoy it, they live happily in it, they flourish in it. And this generation is that they are attached to the city. They are quite open to the world, they go, they go, but they are Beirutis. How do you see where, where these, these artists, this artistic movement here in Lebanon, where do you feel it's going to go? You never know. You never know, really. In, in painting, it can go to no limits. It happened in history. I mean, Latin American artists, Mexican artists conquered the world at certain phases. But now the Chinese are doing that along with other countries. At a certain period in the uh, early modern era, the Russians uh, did Naum Cabo, Pe Naum Pevsner, etc. Did all that cataclysmic abstract uh, movement in the just at the turn of the 20th century, immediately prior and during and after the Russian uh, Soviet uh, Revolution. Uh, it happens, and these young, this young generation is is uh, is as good as anything happening anywhere, and they are as se as serious sometimes more, because there is a sense of engagement which uh, which is quite stimulating. And seeing also, we, we've been seeing that here in Lebanon they are doing now the art week, the art fair. It started, it started really from the early 90s. But uh, as it depends on generally on galleries and unlike uh, well-organized societies like in Europe, where the local galleries take the initiative of putting together something to advance their, the, 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 their business, let's call it. So you get the Swiss between two or three galleries and whatever they organize, with an international connection here, Basel. In France, the FIAC. In, I don't know what, but unfortunately, the Lebanese uh, still haven't learned to shed a little bit of their individuality in order to cooperate in the same business and to make uh, so we got we get lebanon is a beautiful place and we get some people who uh, think there is potential and they come from europe and they start lobbying and selling an idea and it starts slowly 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 like the current art fair up till now it wasn't anything you would write home about but I was surprised this year. I was really surprised. The, it's a small fair, but it's quality. It's uh, reached internationally. It had uh, uh, Latin American galleries. It has Far Eastern galleries. It had Arab galleries. It had, and the quality presentation and selection was really pleasing very pleasing and of an excellent standard. It will improve, we never know. 
it's, it's, uh, and at that time before the war, even collecting was, was the domain of a cultured elite, middle class, uh, professionals who enjoyed art and enjoyed integrating in their lifestyle. And art wasn't expensive then. I mean, you should, uh, you could buy a Arif Reyes that's worth, well, many thousands now. At that time, for something like two, three, four hundred dollars maximum, maximum, that the rate of exchange of that time, this was too expensive, you know. But now there is a shift. Middle class had disappeared during the war, so that many of these people either changed uh, priorities in work and life and priorities of their lives. So art took second place to prime priorities like getting their jobs, getting advancement, getting uh, uh, meeting requirements of a family, of a that left the field to potentially to uh, society that is very limited of affluent businesses and uh, and they became the prime contractor, prime clients of of art and. Uh, Luckily, some of them, although they really improved the situation for artists with the, with the Gulf trying to, you know, simulate, imitate Beirut in all its aspects, it uh, imported the best architects in the world and in, uh, from Lebanon, best craftsmen, best I don't know, so you get Dubai and Dalar and uh, these big cities, but that local life, they made it, some of them made fantastic, but then you put it all together and you see what is the what life is there, it is good for passing affluent or whatever it is, or professionals, it's a transit uh, city. It's not a place like here. I know journalists and people who just pass through and settled in the country. You know, this is uh, a, a big difference. Here there is interaction, the museums, they made all the museums to get all the fixtures of identity and modern life. And so. But in these museums, except in official openings, you barely get 10 people walking in a day. On the other hand, you get a place like Beirut, small city by all standards and now over the past eight years, seven, eight, five to eight years, some serious collections are taking place, very serious. Some of them on Lebanese art, one of them which is very impressive. It was by done by civil effort between uh, uh, in the in, in the civil society of uh, successful businessmen. The a group of ladies under the name of Appeal 
envisaged the potential of doing a museum in Beirut for contemporary art, an active museum, unlike the the unlike the current museum, which is reopened uh, Sursog, but it has a bit limited uh, uh, means because it belongs to, to the uh, municipality for financing. This group of young wives of entrepreneurs batched together and started formulating an idea. And their idea was that why can't they talk to the San Joseph University who are big owners of terrain traditionally in Beirut and that university offered the land. They started lobbying the government. The government had a policy of buying from Lebanese artists over the past 60 or 50 or 60, 70 years even. And they're just accumulating in administrative warehouses. They got engagement from the authorities, the government, to make this collection after its restoration and curatorship and whatever, the central piece of modern and contemporary art. That's, uh, that's quite an effort. And some bankers, one banker who uh, moved his, it was a traditional Beiruti bank, it sold, uh, it merged or amalgamated with another bigger bank. So the owner of that traditional bank decided now his minor in banking uh, interest for himself, but decided to fit young as well to develop a collection with a museum in inside. Another uh, uh, Palestinian uh, uh, businessman also started five years ago and accumulated a collection of some 3,000 works of mixed whatever you want standing but it has jewels of work, you know. Uh, at the same time, it has a reach that is unique. It is pan-Arab. And in particularity, because the man is Palestinian, he made a lot of accent on Palestinian art for me. See, I knew some Palestinian artists historically, but I didn't know the amount that this guy assiduously collected. You curate these and you can reclass what is worthwhile, what is less, what is be beginning, but it's, it's impressive. These things are happening in Beirut and this is what I like. Now, that, <clears throat> before talking about the collections, we were talking about the galleries and so. Uh, the other day while talking to Saleh, he he quoted you as his mentor. Oh, and he exaggerates. <laughs> <laughs> and I was wondering, because he started Ajial just when the war was still finishing. They, they were just finishing. What role do you think Salek is playing? No, because at that time there was another gallery that closed down now, uh, and it was an association in Ras Beirut because we didn't know what was happening over at the other side of the country. There was a professor and an artist of, at the university uh, here and uh, a lady, uh, let me remember her, 
sorry for this. Where, uh, but where we stopped the other day. No, 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 you haven't seen her. What uh, uh, Asumption I exhibited with her as well. Mm. What's, what's her name? I don't I, know. You have to um. organize this anyway. <laughs> She opened at the same time that Saleh was open. Amal? Amal Trabulsi. Then she had a gallery in uh, behind Sursu. Then she had uh, moved into the Saifi zone. But then galleries as such really, unless you succeed in regional and international relationships, are not a, 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 you know, especially if you are like Amal was, like Saleh started. Saleh's uh, advantage is he is an MBA graduate with a passion for art. And his conventional family didn't understand why, but he stuck to it. He made some fantastic inroads of balancing what is needed to make a passion a good business at the same time. You know, so he he has that balance. He knows how to invest in art. He knows how to see the future of artists and he discovered them at the beginning and he knows also because of his education and long experience and engagement in everything in Beirut. He knows it geographically, he knows it socially, he knows it uh, uh, commercially, business-wise, he knows all the institutions, he dialogues, he's, he's a well-structured person and he succeeded, succeeding, and I, I am sure he will, uh, he will attain some serious uh, realizations because till now he's done very well, especially in spotting talent and deve and helping develop it, and that takes you know that's what we used to do, but we used to do it without any backup plan of assuring continuity. We were uh, going on for our, uh, you know, passion. But then, shit, you get confronted with the rent, with the debt, with the whatever it is, and you don't know how to manage it. Uh, but making a gallery a successful business needs good balance and equilibrium. And uh, Saleh definitely has that balance, which is good for art, good for artists, because they can plan on long-term relationships. That's what was missing for a certain period here. You know, you didn't get artists related to galleries during a span of time during their development. It means they didn't, couldn't depend their livelihood on it. So they took jobs as teachers, uh, as uh, something else, or employees of the government, or whatever it is. Now, artists, Thanks to the quality of, of trade that's happening, can very well survive by their own production and means. <clears throat> I think that is all for today. Yeah, very good.